That's true humility. True humility is recognizing I can't do it on my own. I need God. I need His help. I need His love. I need His mercy. <clears throat> the sad thing is that when we don't do that, when we, when we fill ourselves with pride, with jealousy, with envy, what happens? We begin to break apart, don't we? I mean, you look at our society today. One of the reasons for the, for the illness in our society today is pride, jealousy, envy. You know, that's why we've got the last two commandments. I think I've talked about this before. What do we need a commandment that says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife? We already have one that says, You shall not commit adultery. Doesn't that cover it? Or we have a commandment that says, thou shalt not steal. What do we need a covet, uh, uh, one that says you shouldn't covet your neighbor's mule or his possessions? The reason is simple, because that's where sin begins. When we allow jealousy and envy into our heart, that's when we begin to break apart. It can break apart a family, it can break apart friends, it can break apart a community, it can break apart a country, it can break apart the church. <coughs> Because what happens in that kind of envy, that kind of jealousy, and especially in that kind of pride, is that a lot of times we begin to look upon, sort of like the Pharisee, everybody who doesn't agree with me is not simply wrong or mistaken, they're evil. How many times have I heard that in the church? That person disagrees with me, the devil is working through them. That's the reason why our civil discourse is breaking down. We can't honor the other person's love of their country. Instead, we say, they don't agree with me. They are evil. We've forgotten. You don't have to agree with someone to be able to respect them. And it's exactly what St. James said would happen. That if we allow envy and jealousy and pride into our hearts, it begins to tear us apart. We need to do as a community, as the followers of Christ, because remember, the big fat puffed up Pharisee did not go home justified. He did not go home forgiven. His prayers were not heard because he was so full of himself, there was no way for God to get in. You know, the way that we really find God is to walk this earth in humility and love for one another. Isn't that what Jesus tells us? That when we love one another, we truly love him. You know, that when our neighbor, <coughs> maybe our neighbor has a better house. Maybe our, our neighbor, and I know this is hard for many of us to believe, that somebody else could be better looking, but maybe they are. You know, maybe they got more money. Maybe they've got more talents. And instead of saying, wow, praise God, my sister and brother in Christ is doing so well. We get angry about it. I always remember when I was <clears throat> chaplain at Southwest Texas State University, we always had uh, a mass and a dinner uh, for our graduates, the graduating students and their parents and family. And one of the students that was graduating after the mass introduced me to his father. His father had been born in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. He had spent his life working on a farm or a ranch he barely had a third grade education. In fact, this trip to San Marcos was the furthest he'd ever been from his home in his whole life. <clears throat> Here was a man, you know, that basically had nothing. And when, <clears throat> when I was introduced, when, he, when, he, when his son introduced me to him, the very first thing his, that the father did was look at his son and look at me and he said, Padre, this is my son, and I am so proud of him. You know, he wasn't jealous to say, when I was his age, I was, my skin was brown, and so I wasn't allowed to go to college. I wasn't allowed to go to school. I had to work. He wasn't that. He was so proud that his son had accomplished all of this. And it should be the same way with each of us with our sisters and brothers in Christ. That rather than saying, why did they get that instead of me? Instead of saying, I am so proud of them. 
They're my sister and brother in Christ and they're doing so well and I'm so proud of them. Think of what this world would be if, we ha if everyone had that attitude. You, know, you wouldn't have to have bars on your doors and your windows. You wouldn't have to have those stupid car alarms that go off at the worst times. You know. Think of what our world would be like. We see what our world is like when we surrender to bitterness, anger, envy, and jealousy. That's the root of terrorism. That's the root of most of the evil that we face in the world today. And St. James and our good Lord is pointing it out to us and telling us, stop! Put it out of you. Let me in. Stop the pride. Stop the jealousy. Stop the envy. Be proud of who you are as a gift from God. Be proud of your sisters and brothers in Christ for what they have done. Don't be envious of them, but be happy with them. And as we do this each day, we continue, you know, think of how the world would change. So tonight, I just invite you to open your heart. If there's somebody that you're envious of, there's somebody you're jealous of, I'd ask you tonight to say a prayer for that person, a prayer of thanksgiving for that person, a prayer for what that person has. And in that, say a prayer for the gift that you are. Because the greatest tragedy of all, when we're jealous or envious of someone else, is because we don't recognize the gift that we are. We don't recognize our gifts, our talents, our contributions. We sell ourselves short. So when you say that prayer, maybe for that person you're jealous or envious of tonight, also say a prayer in thanksgiving for who you are. And remember each day that true humility is the courage to recognize that I need God. And then maybe for each and every one of us, our prayer should be from the Psalms. I look up to the mountain from whence comes my help. <coughs> my help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen and amen. And now, with humble hearts, let us stand and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father. Oh,